Is it okay if you put your stuff in dirty holes? Find out how compromised glue and bolts are if you don't clean the holes perfectly or at all in this case on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and this is Bobby. <laughs> and we're going to break some more bowls today. Uh, basically, we have three fixed bell-shaped glue-ins that we did not clean the hole at all. Let me show you what we got. So you can, it kind of rained last night, but this is just all the uh, concrete dust, I guess. Feels like sand. Um, I guess that's what concrete is. So we're going to blow this away, but we just want to show you that it is very, very dirty. We installed all this last night with Liquid Rock 500 glue. And this is some very dirty holes. In theory, uh, this should pull out the glue. And if it doesn't, that means we're getting full strength. These have threaded rods on them, which means it has great engagement with the glue and should not come off of the glue. Stainless steel does not stick to epoxy very well. All right, we finally, this is not her first try making bolts come out of dirty holes. Look what happened to the concrete. Damn it. <laughs> Super coned out. Cracked all the way over to there. Oh, that's cool. So you can see here that the, there is some glue stuck to the side there, but all right. I guess I could send this concrete in to get tested for PSI. Um, that's really, that's really neat looking. Anyways, it doesn't seem like it's gonna come off. That was everything that could fail, failed there. The glue <laughs> failed, the hole no. cleanliness <laughs> failed, the concrete failed. Okay, okay. I'm just, this is awesome. I've spent a year trying to make this happen. So, <laughs> all right, what do we get? Oh, geez. <laughs> can we just... 51.56. Can we all just be nicer to each other if somebody didn't, like, super clean their holes? I mean, we can kind of be mean to people who don't clean them at all, but, I mean, that... That was pretty impressive. In case you haven't seen our bolt buster system before, this is to pull things in tension. Now, why are we testing in tension, you ask? Well, I imagine that's the worst case scenario for a hole that's not cleaned. Because if you pulled it in shear, well, I just don't think it's that big of a deal if this is not a big deal. Um, what we have here is air goes into this pump and pumps it into this uh, hollow ram cylinder. And then we've got, I think, a one and a quarter inch threaded rod with this awesome thing and it lifts it up slowly so we can uh, capture the slow motion. This is the 20,000 pound dyno that we recently got calibrated. Very, very fun for nerds. And then we are going to test some, uh, this will be in another episode, some bolts that will be torqued to nothing or 100% of specs or two or 300% of specs. So that's next on the agenda today. Normally we use our hydraulic cylinder on this side in my backyard here. Our pump um, moves this in and out. I've got a seven point anchor, so this does not fail. And the stuff in our bolt buster concrete does fail. And so far the concrete is failing miserably. How not to de demo concrete slabs. <laughs> wow. All right, this one's going in bolt. The, the Slack Snap mu Museum. The Slack Snap. The Slack Museum. <laughs> um, that is so cool. That's exactly what we are told will happen if you don't clean the holes. So this is 
super dusty, right? You can see. And that's why the glue is not sticking to the concrete. It's very important when you drill a hole that you wire brush it, uh, blow it with air, and do it over and over about four or five times until like nothing comes out. Um, we just don't have this problem when we properly clean them. But clearly, even though it's dirty, I'm shocked, utterly shocked at 44.78 kilonewtons. All right, pretty consistent results. The amount of force we got on that, we'll find out when we look at the camera because we forgot to push peak hold. We might try to hammer off this glue and use this bolt for another test because it's in really, really great shape. I assume it's in the 40s. Um, it just kept coming out in stages, which is a little bit different than our last test. So on another day, we did tests in with wave bolts in tension and twist bolts in tension. Basically the weakest ones, eh, they start to bend low, they're pretty strong. And then the strongest ones, just to see if the smoothness or the twist action gave it more strength, we we're trying to get a cone, a glue cone like we got today. Now we already made a video about the wave bolts coming out and we got between 22 to 30 kilonewtons, which is pretty good, but it just came out of the glue. The glue did not disengage from the concrete. Now we're trying to tie in a concept into one video. And so we're adding extra brake tests per video like you've requested instead of just doing three per episode. However, I don't wanna do so many data points that it gets lost on everybody, but we did the twist bolts, pulled them in tension, and they basically disengage from the glue. Epoxy does not stick to stainless, or most metals for that case, very well or like not at all. So it goes crack, and then it just basically untwisted out like it was a, a threaded screw. But that also showed that the glue did not come off of the rock inside, which is what it did today. It took us a year of bolt busting to finally recreate uh, what Jim Tit did. Now, I love Jim's tits. I'm, I love Jim Tit's holes. I love Jim Tit's dirty holes. Ah, I guess I can't tease the guy. My last name is Jinx. Anyways, uh, Jim Tit did has on boltproducts.com, he has a picture of bolts that have coned glue, glue stuck on the bolt and have come out of dirty holes. And I thought that would just happen every time if you didn't sterilize a hole, because you're supposed to blow the dust out, wire brush it, blow the dust out, wire brush it, and do that at least four cycles, which I still think you should, but it was just so hard to recreate that. And we've got pretty high results today. Put in the comments below if you think it has to do with rock type and the adhesion to that. There was dust on my glue cone today. And I don't know, this is just a discussion. We've now done three sets of three tests in tension. Obviously shear is a lot different. We did not even use glue on wave bolts in shear. And it was pretty dang strong. Now cyclic loading might pull them out. So please, please use glue. They're not pitons. Anyways, I will put in the link in the description below to Jim's article on this, but that's also in the Bolting Bible, which has literally everything that's on the internet in one place, nice and organized. So that's all at hownottohighline.com. So I think it's interesting that we got between 41 and 44 kilonewtons pulling this one out, 22 to 30 kilonewtons pulling this one out, and over 40 kilonewtons today. So, 
I still think we should clean holes. I really do. I just think we should be nicer to people when they've taken the effort to put in bolts, not to be so mean if they didn't do it up to the perfect standard. Let me put a disclaimer real quick, something I've actually personally experienced. This is more complicated than a mechanical bolt to install. It's a lot messier. You do need a few more things. But I have seen these. I've pulled them out from other people installing them with my bare hands because the epoxy did not mix right. I think that's the biggest risk when people are using glue and bolts. A dirty hole is the second worst thing you can do, but a Glue that's not mixed is basically just a bunch of gunk in a hole that's not holding the bolt. And it usually takes, for at least the epoxies I use, a day to dry. Many, many hours. So you'd put it in and leave. And not many people go back and check their work. So I like to squirt a little into a Ziploc bag, maybe my garbage bag, and make sure that what I put in that hole was hard in the bag. If this isn't hard, that's not hard. It's very important to squirt out a good chunk out of the nozzle before you start to fill up the hole because that first amount is not mixed properly. And mixing is the biggest risk in gluons.